All right, guys, I want to start by hitting on this gas prices issue because a lot of people seem to be talking about it. You and I and, and Phil, we are not, Wes, economists. No. Nope. We are not energy experts. No. Nope. But when something like this happens, politics plays a role, I believe. Uh, maybe more nationally because I know uh, this past Sunday on Fox News Sunday, Newt Gingrich, for example, came out and said, basically hit on President Obama blaming him for the high gas prices. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to ask you guys here today, because I watch all of these guys talk about, you know, Middle East and gas prices and uh, instability in Iran mm -hmm. is why the gas prices are so high. So my question to you is when Republicans are hitting on, say, President Obama for high gas prices, is that a fair criticism? Can one president control how gas prices go up or down based on all these other factors, maybe even across the yeah, overseas. Absolutely, because it, our gas prices are directly dependent on our, our national, uh, our, our foreign policy, excuse mm -hmm. me, and our energy policy back at home. But this is a bad problem for Barack Obama. Things were looking very good for him because those unemployment numbers were yeah. coming down. But listen, people don't pay attention to the unemployment numbers like they do that big sign that they pass on the side of the road. On the way to work, I think I passed six of them. Yeah. And it's creeping up to $4. When people see that boom, that sign on the side of the road, they automatically think our economy is going to crap. Thus, I'm going to blame Barack Obama. But let's say a Republican president wins in November. What can a Republican president do differently to make the gas prices well, come the first down. thing they can do is uh, is decrease our dependence on foreign oil from our enemies. You know, Barack Obama just stopped the Keystone Pipeline, which would have brought more oil down from Canada, an ally. That's the that's the number one thing he could have done to help with gas prices. Phil, let me play devil's advocate here. Is this a simple reason of of Republicans looking for something because maybe the economy is getting better? Uh, the Dow went above 13,000 for a little bit earlier today. And they're thinking, all right, this is something we can hit the president on. People are angry about high gas prices. If we blame the president, that will help us in November. Absolutely. Is I mean, is? this is, well, this is um, <laughs> politics, and you know, they've got something to use right now, uh, mainly to distract the voters from, from their lousy uh, candidates on their side. Uh, you got Rick Santorum, who is uh, just, out, uh, just an outrageous individual. Uh, you've got uh, Mitt Romney, who's uh, a, a, just a deeply flawed candidate. And so, sure, they're going to use this gas price uh, issue to, to distract the voters. I don't disagree. Listen, I tell my candidates all the time, don't poke at your opponent. Wait till you have a wide open shot and smash his nose. And this is a wide open shot that they got at the president. This is partly his fault, so obviously the Republicans are going to go after him. We talked uh, in, you know, in the past year about, hey, you know, if, if the unemployment is at a certain number, you know, what are Obama's re-election chances, ch chances? Can we say that about gas prices? For example, if gas prices are at four, well, depending on where you live, four or five, six dollars a gallon, I mean, how can he defend himself? It, it, it could be a potential factor in, in the election, but, you know, it, the, again, the economy is moving in the right direction. It's 23 straight months of job growth. As you said, the Dow hit 13,000 today, first mm -hmm. time since 2008. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the overall economic picture is improving in, in the U.S., uh, and, you know, they, Republicans, uh, certainly probably would take a, 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 an opportunity with that with, with the gas prices. Yeah, I mean, this is an issue that really hurts uh, middle class Americans. Yeah. You know, I went from, my Land Rover went from $50 filling it up to about $90 yesterday. I've, I've absolutely, middle class Americans are going to be very upset, and that's the people that these guys are going to be fighting for. You know, if gas prices go up to seven, eight dollars a gallon, uh, three of us might be driving mopeds around yeah, town, be, and yeah. that uh, that kind of leads into our next story, which is something that's uh, come, uh, up in the in the state senate. The state house passed it last year. State senate looking at it right now, and that is uh, the drunken driving laws involving mopeds. Mm -hmm. You know, right now you do not need a driver's license in South Carolina to drive a moped. So, so there are people who maybe have their licenses suspended uh, for a drunken drive and arrest driver's licenses, they can get around on these mopeds, go to work or wherever they need to go. The law being discussed now is that if you are caught driving drunk on a moped, these laws will be enforced. There, there are reports that uh, a lot of these cases are being thrown out because people are on mopeds and it's not like driving a car. Uh, the state senate uh, Senators, some of them want to enforce these drunken driving laws mm -hmm. for people who drive mopeds. Uh, Wes, good idea in your Yeah, I think it's a great idea. This is actually a bill that came up from the House, right. Representative Durham Cole from Spartanburg. Great bill. We call these liquor sickles, or we did in, in college, <laughs> yeah. or Dewey pads, you know, DUI pads. And that's why, because, you know, if you get a DUI, you lose your license, you can go get one of these things, and you could be just as drunk leaving five points, pulling out into a middle of the intersection and causing a bad crash. I think it's a great bill. One Democratic Senator, Phil, uh, Gerald Malloy from Darlington, wasn't too sure about this because he was saying, well, we exempt things like bicycles and tractors from these from these drunken driving laws. So, 
you know, mopeds, uh, how do we classify them? You can't really take someone's license away for driving drunk on a moped because you don't need a license to drive one. Most Democrats feel that way, that this is kind of uh, not worth the time and effort? Well, I mean, they're going to be, this is p part of the, the reason why the, the, the study is called the deliberative body. They're yeah. going to, they're going to discuss this and, you know, um, take a, take a broad picture, uh, broad approach to it and say, you know, mopeds, there's an exemption right now currently. Well, right. there's an exemption for tractors, there's uh, an exemption for bicycles. You know, what's next? Uh, those questions are going to be raised. Uh, I, I generally think that it, it is a, it is a bad idea to be driving around on a moped sure. uh, at night or drunk at any yes. point. So. Yeah, but let's be real about this. Gerald Malloy is a trial lawyer who represents <laughs> DUI cases, okay, as are a lot of other trial lawyers in the Senate and the House. These are their customers that they represent in court that got their license suspended and are now driving these liquor sickles. So it's obvious why uh, Gerald Malloy is standing where he's standing. We will keep an eye on this bill as it goes through the Senate. We'll keep an eye on gas prices as well. Who knows, maybe the three of us, maybe no more Range Rover for West. Maybe it's a uh, liquor sickle in the, in the future. Maybe. He'll be driving a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, Pub Politics Live this week. Yes, yeah, 6 o'clock at, at the Wig. It's morning. Wednesday night. All right, PubPoliticsLive.com, by the way, is the website to see these guys in action. Phil and Wes, as always, thanks for coming by. We'll see thanks, you next man. week. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, back to you.